Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for traveling mercies. We thank you for the things that we often, so often neglect. We thank you for this gathering of believers, of doubters, of those who are searching, of those who have are confident of their identity is in you. We're asking now, Spirit of the living God, that you will fall afresh on this place, that the words that are spoken today will come directly from yourself, and you will do what you do best, which is convict hearts. Speak to us like no one else can. These things are asked in your name. Amen. And if we could turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 19. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. How many of us have our Bibles? Matthew chapter 19. I'm going to encourage you to bring your Bibles with you or at least download it on your iPhone or Samsung. What other phones are we looking at? Nokia? Blackberry? No? Nokia? Just download it on your iPhone. But we want to try and get you guys to get into the Word. Uh, it's important, and let me say this, it's important to listen, but it's more important to study for yourself. Uh, it's, it's so much more important that you are studying the Word of God for yourself. Matthew chapter 19. And what verse did I say? What verse did I say? And verse 16. The Bible says, and I'm, what, what verse is this, Pastor? The NIV. Now behold, one came and said to him, good teacher, what good thing shall I do? What good thing shall I do? What good thing shall I do? One more time. What good thing shall I do? I do, that I may have eternal life. So he said unto him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. So you ask me a question, I'll respond like for like. He said to him, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as, as yourself. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, did the rich young ruler talk about being perfect? That was the question. He was asking about eternal life, but Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, go Sell what you have and give to the, and you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had what? If we, if we can go to the screen, Kate. Anthony, the rich guy, and Jesus. Anthony, the rich guy, and Jesus. The Bible says in verse 16, Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing should I do to have eternal life? Jesus says, look, you're looking at me as if I am going to fix all of this. You're talking to me as if I am good. You're talking to me as if by myself I can do this. Because Jesus recognizes that any good thing that comes from him comes from who? God. So if you're going to... Lift me up, recognize where my power is coming from. So if it's about goodness, then look at God who is the only one who is good. But if you want to keep the if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, which ones? And then Jesus goes about and he lists these commandments. Now I'm going to stop at verse 22. There is more to the text, but for this opportunity, for this moment, we're going to stop at this time. Now watch this. If I said to you, Keep the commandments. What comes to your mind? The Ten Commandments. Now describe that to me. Keep the commandments. Now, folks, please just stop right there. I don't want you to give me the correct answer because as Adventists, we're good at that. We know the right answers. What I want you to do is give me the emotions, the feeling, what naturally comes to you individually. If I say keep the commandments, what do you think of first? 
the Sabbath. Keep the commandments. Be good. Tell the truth. Don't lie. Someone else. So I say that again. Not being able to keep all of them. Thank you. Legalism. Work. Now, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. Whether you said this or not, this is what I think of. Whenever I think of commandment, for me, it is stuff that I cannot do. Keep the commandments. What have I done now? But with the rich young ruler, he's like, he's like, Jesus listed the commandments and he's like, I'm doing them. I, I am doing these commandments. So what is, name the commandments. Don't commit adultery, honor your parents. Let's list them. Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not steal, you shall not bear full witness, honor your father, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The rich ruler says, young man says, all these are kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Kate, I, I, Kate, first slide please. Thank you so much. So let's, 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 this, 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 this resonates with me. I grew up in the church from the age of seven, Sabbath school, divine service, and AYS. Pathfinders, prayer meeting. What is the community outreach that we do? If somebody said community outreach as a church, what is the infamous community outreach we would do? Adra, thank you, Adra. Adra is the fundamental community outreach we would do. And so I had to do all of these things. It's Adra time, you have to go out into the community, carry our tins and knock on doors. It's pathfinders, drilling and marching. Dosha, what's the command? Uh, the part from the Lord is for me to keep the morning watch, do my honest part, care for my body, keep love alive, be cautious and obedient. I can recite these things from memory. It is good for me. Because if I recite things from memory, the church says, Amen. There's something about doing good stuff. Oh, my son got 10 A's. Oh, he's, we're so proud of him. Oh, he went agile. Oh, we're so proud of him. Oh, he memorized all these 30 memories. We're so proud of him. There is something about our training in the Adventist church that teaches me to keep doing good things. To keep doing good things. I want to be saved. What else must I do? But this is the problem that I have with, with the text right now is that I grew up in the church and I did all these good things, but yet when I went to college, when I went to school, these things, the TV, my friends, sex, money, and power, influenced me more. How do I know this? Because when real life hit me, when reality hit me, the memory verses did not Help me make a spiritual decision. My going to park finders and drilling and marching did not help me walk away from danger or evil. In fact, because of people like Will Smith and James Bond and many other movies, and because of my friends, I actually was more prone to make the wrong decisions than the spiritual decision. Because even though I went to church every Sabbath, I was a part finder up until a helping hand. Adra, once a year. I learned my 30 memory verses every 13th Sabbath. When it came to life, I did what Will Smith taught me. When it came to life, I did what the TV taught me. Because there was something that I realized. The way that I was taught to do church, the way that I did church, was more about doing good things. And so the rich and ruler naturally comes from that standpoint. What good thing must I do to be saved? What good thing? Kate, next slide, please. And so Jesus rolls off the commandments. Keep going. We've read it. Respect. Murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't bear full witness. Don't covet. It doesn't say don't covet. Love your neighbor as yourself. These are the one, two, three, four, five, six. Six commandments he brings up. And the rich and ruler says, I'm doing all of this. Jesus, I'm doing all of this. But this is the interesting thing. He is honest, Kathy. He is honest enough to say this. I'm doing this, but something is still missing. He's honest. I, I love this. And, and then I begin to come back on me. 
I am going to church, folks. I am memorizing the memory text. We say to our children, these two, and I'm going to talk about these two in a minute. Go to church, go to church, go to church. Do, 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 do. We are the doing people. We tell people to do, to do, to do. But deep down we know something is still missing. Because, because this is the thing for me. When I speak to a group of young people and I start off like this. Who supports Arsenal? You know, boo, yeah, Arsenal football, England, this. Everybody's got something to say. But when I talk about biblical stuff, ah, prayer meeting, ah, it's not so passionate. But yet we're doing the right things. And so that's reading this a little bit, that's a little bit. What's more important about this text is not what Jesus said, it's what he didn't say. And this is where I'm going to end. Okay? What did Jesus say? Let's go. This is what he said. This is what he didn't say. Worship no other gods. Make no other gods. Take my name seriously. And keep, what does take my name seriously, by the way, mean? Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. What does that mean? Because when I studied this, I was actually quiet. I didn't, I didn't know. What, what were we taught that that means? Don't say his name. Like, like oh my, or oh, oh. You're not meant to say it, though. You're not meant to, you're not meant to say it. <laughs> you're not meant to say it. That's what it says. Oh, but then when you look at it, what it means is don't say you're a Christian, but act the fool. Don't come to church and say, yeah, I'm a Christian, and you're sitting down singing these songs, but deep down you don't care. Stop being fake. Stop taking my name in vain. Because when I see you come to church and you can't love on me or you can't share or you're always talking about me and you've got my name on you, you're making me look bad. Don't make other gods, but worship other gods. Worship other gods. Back, back, Kate. Worship other gods. What god was the rich and ruler worshiping? His money. What? Make no other gods. What god did he make? His money. Take my name seriously. If you are no longer following me, but you're following your money, you cannot be serious about me. If you're not serious about me, then the Sabbath makes no sense. And so by default, by putting another God in my place, you already strike the four. Here is, here is the problem. It is possible, it is possible to be breaking the first four, but doing everything else. Which is why it's deceptive. Identity. Identity. The second one, first one, keep going. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. Jesus was speaking to the ruler relationally. You're keeping my commandments, but you're keeping them for the wrong reasons. <laughs> you don't know that salvation is found in me, which is why you're asking what good thing must I do to be saved. When the rich young ruler heard this, the Bible says that he walks away bitterly. He's upset. He's upset. So let me ask this question now. The rich young ruler had replaced God of heaven with his money, his possessions. So this is the question I want to ask you. Is it possible that some of us in this room, many of us in this room, are in danger of doing the same thing? Is it possible? How do you know? How do you know? Whoever or whatever, whoever is a who, somebody, or whatever is a thing you spend the most time doing, your thought captivates you the most on that thing or who, that person or that thing is your God. And when your God is threatened to be taken away from you, all hell breaks loose. Because it's your God. You worship it, you reverence it, you obey it, you do whatever it says, and whatever you say to me to do, I will do. God is in one's relationship. Love the Lord, the greatest commandment is what? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God 
with all your heart, soul, and mind. Listen to the irony of this. The greatest commandment is a relational commandment. Even though subconsciously we see commandments as doing. So God spoke to me about this. Next slide, please. Relationship with Christ, as we're going to learn this week through Chaplain June, Pastor Ivers, and Pastor Graham, is simply this. Identity, which is found in the word of God, which is found in seeking his face, and which is found in ministering with others. Ministering with others. Relationship with God. This is what God did to me. Next slide, please. When you put up something like this, this is my family, this is my wife, this is my children. They're right here, age and Christian. Yep, you can bend your head, it's okay. <laughs> when you put a picture like that up on Facebook or on Instagram, what happens? You get likes. Right, you get, so get some strong likes. Now, question to, to, for our Instagram folk and our Facebook folk. Does a picture reveal the whole truth? <laughs> no, 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 no. It does not. So herein lies the issue. I was with Agent Christian picking him up from school. And I was sitting down, Pastor Des, and I thought, let me have a discussion with my sons. So I was like driving my car and I was like, Agent Christian, how's your day? They said, fine. I said, okay, what was fine about your day? We did English and maths. Okay, what else did you do? Oh, we read some books. Okay, I'm struggling now. What did you have for lunch? Oh, we had chips and this. Was it nice? Uh, no. Christian's not talking, by the way. It's just AJ talking. Christian, how about your day? It was okay. This felt like two hours. And so what I did is I stopped and did what I normally do, which is play music and just start bubbling with them. Pick your song you like and we just drive down the road. I realized then that I struggle to speak to my children. Hear me now. Hear me. I live with my kids. I see them every day. I put them to bed most nights. I brush their teeth. I buy their clothes. I provide for them. They see me on a regular basis. Yet when I talk to them, there is this uh, moment. Andrew came to my house the other day. And AJ was sitting down like this. Andrew came over. This is what God is showing me something now. And Andrew comes and says, what are you doing? They're playing their iPad. So Andrew sits down next to them and goes like this. Let me play. And so they all start playing together. Andrew now has to go. So Andrew goes and comes back the next day. He comes home with the iPad and goes like this. Guess what I've got? I've downloaded the app. And these two are like, oh, this is crazy. So now move down, move down, move down, move down, move down. Move down. So Andrew now, they're in, they're, they're in the front room in my house playing the app. And they're smiling and da 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 da. They've been doing this for a week straight. Andrew doesn't come the following week. So I'm sitting with my sons. Hear me now, my sons. And then Adrian says to me, when's Andrew coming over? What? But, but I'm here. I said, I don't know when he's coming over. The next day, who comes over? Andrew knocks on the door. Is that Andrew? Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. I'm standing over here and I'm thinking, you don't, you don't open a door like that for me. And so Andrew comes in and starts playing, starts playing with them. I'm not going to lie to you folks. Some jealousy creeped in there. Because I'm like, <laughs> you're playing on my iPad that I brought you. In, in, right, right, in my house. But Andrew's come in and has taught me something that I had missed. Folks, I'm a good dad. I'm a good dad. And in, in comparison to many dads, I'm a good dad. I provide for my children. I will fight for my children. I am faithful husband. I will do what I need to do. But God showed me this. You are a good dad, but you are struggling with intimacy. See, you see them all the time. You provide for them all the time. You're there in their presence all the time, but you still don't know them. You know what you need to give them, but you don't know what they really need. And what Andrew showed me that day was this. I am always saying to them, come up to me. But what Andrew did is went down to them. And did something in two weeks that I began to do. So what do you think I did? I don't care. I'll, I'll copycat. I don't care. I said, guys, I downloaded it too. <laughs> 
Now, folks, when I downloaded the game, and I'm now by my soul trying to catch up with them, I'm playing this app. Folks, it's a dead game. It is boring. But you know what? They like it. I like it. Wait, what are you laughing for? <laughs> Relationship. Next slide, please. Intimacy. See, see, we go to church. We do church stuff. We do good things. We're going through even teaching our kids to do the same thing that we did. But the question I want to leave with you today is are we intimate with God? Are we spending that quality time? Are we doing what God does, what God needs, what God desires? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in what? In the law of the Lord. That's what God loves. And if I'm trying to be a God man, if I'm trying to be a God woman, then I need to on some level begin to delight in the law of the Lord. But don't stop there. And his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he does what? Meditate day and? Now, I'll be honest with you. Day and night? And the Bible says if you do that, you should be like a tree. Planted by the what? The rivers of water. But this is the thing. There are some things that God needs for us to do to build intimacy. And this is what I'm realizing, Max, I'm closing now. As youth director, this is the biggest challenge. How do I get the young people and the church at large to begin to like each other? To stop being critical of each other and judgmental of everybody. This, this, is, this is it. Oh, the, the, the praise team weren't strong enough. Look at what she's wearing. Look at what she's doing. What, what, when do we get to the point where it's just like, brother, I'm just here to be with you, to know you, to be by your side. What are you doing this week? When do you need support? How can we be there? Intimacy. Do you know why the first commandment is love God first? And then love people second? Do you know why that is? Because loving God teaches me about a love that is so deep, so wide, so high, so circumfer that circumference me. That the overflow allows me to love others. I can't love others if I don't know the love of God. And I'm encouraging us today, as Max was saying this week, to don't look at this week as... Oh, it's camp meeting, I have to go to the morning, I have to go to the afternoon, I have to go to... Don't look at it like that. Look at it more as, I want to begin to not only become intimate with Christ, but to become intimate with others. Because the beauty of camp meeting is this. I'm going to see you tomorrow morning. Hello, somebody. And I'm going to see you in the afternoon. And I'm going to see you in the... It's not like church where I'm going to go home. I'm seeing you tomorrow. So if you've only got one pair of trousers, I'm going to know. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm going to know because I'm going to see you this week. But then instead of me laughing at you, let me now be, Lord, show me how I can be a brother. How can I reach out? How can I be a real Christian, a real follower of God? It's not about the doing. It's about the knowing. Let's pray. Father God, so many times, we fall into the trap of what must we do? What can we do? And if you read down the text, you say, well, when it comes to salvation with man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And I thank you for that. Because I have tried and I have worked and I have, I have tried and I have tried more to do this Christian walk. And I'm realizing more than anything that as I begin to know you, as I begin to realize you and experience your awesomeness and your power and your love, and you begin to direct my steps, is the more I want to pour out to others. But more than that, the more I want to give back to you. And so as we experience this week at camp, I pray you'll be of our speakers. I pray you'll be with the camp at large. I pray especially that you'll be of the young people and the parents that are represented here today. We don't know why we're here. We have our opinions, and that's, that's okay. 
But I pray, Spirit of the living God, that you will step in and shake us a little bit to remind us that your way is the only way. So hear my prayer to this end. These things ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.